Hi, this is Bill, and this is going to be a quick, um, re not really a review, but more of an experiment to test uh, the signal strengths and uh, frequency uh, modulations between several brands of radios that I happen to have. And uh, what I've got here is a spectrum analyzer made by NARDA. And um, I'm not an, an expert by any means on how to use this equipment, and I'm not a... Uh, uh, you know, privy on and exactly how these measurements work, but I'll do my best to explain with what I know and, and what I can see in, in my test here. And hopefully some others will be able to point out and uh, provide more insight in, as to what I'm seeing here, but I'll be happy to share it with you folks to see what you, what you can see for yourselves and you can come up with your own conclusions. So um, what I've got set up here is a range um, from 2.40 gigahertz all the way to 2.50 gigahertz on the right. And then on, on the range here, um, it shows at a negative 0.1 and it says E field slash uh, lowercase m uppercase, uppercase v slash m. And of course my screen just happened to go out. Um, so I needed to do some testing. Uh, so anyway, here let's go ahead and get started. And uh, the first radio that I want to show is probably one of the more um, uh, popular brands. This is a FlySky FSGT3C. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the antenna up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the radio on. And then you get start to see some results on the screen. Now I'm gonna try and zoom in here a little bit closer, just so you guys to get perspective of what we're looking at here. And it's just basically a series of spikes on the different frequencies. Um, I also want to point out that I'm in a radio laboratory uh, here and there is no other interference. I'm actually in, located inside what's called a Faraday cage, uh, which is a copper shielded room. And it's uh, isolated from any outside uh, radio signals. So this is a clean, pure, pure clean signal that is being read exclusively f from the FlySky radio. And uh, as you can see, the the, the strength of the frequencies um, shift all the way across the, the, the full band of the spectrum, all the way from 2.4 gigahertz um, up to around 2.48. So some, so this particular radio is using this set of frequencies, and the, the bulk of the strength of the frequencies are falling um, underneath the, the 10 mark. So it goes from 0.1 to 1 to 10, and then all the way up to 100. So the peaks do show up, you know, just just spike just a little bit above 100, but they're not very powerful above the 100. The majority of them are, are peaking at around the 10. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the fly sky and put that off to the side. Uh, the next radio that I'd like to test is as, as these filters away. And this is going to be a uh, an RC3S radio, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this, this radio on next. And when we turn this radio on, you can see that there are only two peaks of signals. Um, one peak is really low down here by the 2.4, and the other peak is really high at the 2.44 range. I'll try to put some input in here. and Those seem to be a, about the same signal strength as the fly sky, maybe just a little bit more, where the fly sky was peaking at about the 10, 10 mark, and then this uh, radio link is going up a little bit higher, almost all the way up to the 100 mark on both of these uh, signals. So it, it almost looks as if um, you, one could argue that the, the radio link is averaging a little bit higher power, although it's only distributed across two channels and not quite as many channels across, across the spectrum from what I can see here. But the power does seem to be pretty significant. And then the peak actually is much higher where the fly sky was topping out at the 100 range. You can see that the radio link is coming almost all the way up to the 1000 mark, way up there at the top. So it's, to, in my opinion, significantly more powerful compared to the fly sky. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, uh, the radio link now. And the next system that I want to switch to is the Turnigy 3XS radio. Go ahead and turn that one on. And in this radio, it seems to be using most of the frequencies between um, 2.44 and 2.46. And there seems to be a lot of a lot more frequencies used 
compared to the uh, the, the radio link, um, and then are also a narrow narrow sh uh, standpoint. But the, just like the uh, radio link, these two are also spiking really high, well past the hundred mark, almost up to the thousand mark at the very top. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, 3XS. The next radio that I'm going to test is a uh, a BER TRC1 radio. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that one on. And this radio is uh, using the full, almost the full spectrum, all the way from 2.4 up to 2.48. And you can see that the radio strength on this one is just like the last two. It's using the full range, all the way, almost up to the thousand mark, way above. Uh, this seems to be producing the strongest signal that I've seen yet of these radios. I'm going to go ahead and turn that radio off. Now the next radio that I'm going to test is a Radio Post uh, TS-401. I'll go ahead and turn this one on. And this one seems to be using frequencies all the way on the far left side of the spectrum down in the 2.4 to 2.41 range and you can see way off to the left there that the the power signal is is very prominent and very strong and it seems to cycle between 10 to 100 and it seems to be staying really tight in that in that 100 grouping it seems to be uh, an extremely powerful signal and very close within that set of frequencies so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that radio off now the next radio that I'm going to turn on is a KO Propo EX1 system. I don't know if it says EX1 anywhere, but you can see KO Propo there. I'm going to go ahead and turn that one on. And this system here seems to be using frequencies all across the, the, the range. Um, it seems to vary, and as time progresses, I can definitely see all the way from 2.40 up to 2.48 the the average strength of the signal is prominent right above the 10 mark uh, just just above the 10 no, none of the signals seem to be going up to the 100 but they are well above the 10 with, uh, consistently as it shifts from frequency to frequency so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that one off that seems to be a pretty reliable signal there where it seems to be the benchmark is that 10 mark seems to be the uh, Anything above the 10 seems to be good. Nice strong signal. So I've went ahead and turned off the KO Pro Pro. And let's see, the very last radio that I have to test here is a, um, a Spectrum uh, DX2E system. Uh, where's the on switch? Go ahead and turn that one on. Okay. And this system seems to be using a, a, a range of frequencies uh, yeah, all the way across from 2.41 to 2.48 it seems to uh, randomly distribute across it doesn't it doesn't show in any one spot it seems to move around pretty good and the signal strength uh, varies anywhere from the 10 mark and sometimes it spikes to just above the 100 mark indicating that it's got a pretty pretty strong signal but it doesn't seem to be consistent. It looks like it it spikes up for a short period of time and then it drops down really low. So I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, where most of the other radios, they appear to always be really high above. And this one doesn't seem to always be as high. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, could just, you know, maybe some other experts uh, can, can chime in and help uh, uh, make more sense out of what I'm seeing here. But uh, anyway... Um, this concludes the testing of what I have to work with. I um, went ahead and turned the radio off here so you can see um, the signals uh, bleed back down. And, uh, and that's all I've got. Uh, thanks for watching and I look forward to hearing other folks' opinions on what they're seeing here with this test and maybe they can help evaluate this uh, um, with scrutiny a little closer than what, I, than, than what my knowledge is of, of this uh, frequency range testing. But uh, thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you guys on the forums.